so you know we had to develop uh, the the focus was uh, was never really developed uh, in mind for an all-wheel drive system. So it was a significant engineering task, uh, both in the drive line and the chassis and the body system, to deliver that uh, at a very high level. And uh, we also add in technology that we've been introducing in our other vehicles, like drive lines, which we'll talk about as well. I mentioned that we've been doing a lot of uh, aerodynamics development that we uh, uh, using wind tunnels and a lot of CFD and uh, just like the Shelby GT350, uh, our objective for this car was zero lift front and rear. And uh, that is quite a lofty goal in a, in, uh, in a sport hatchback like this. And uh, especially when you have a very large uh, cooling opening uh, to maintain track durability. Uh, so you find that the, uh, the grill mesh is, uh, is a very porous design. And uh, we have uh, cooling ducts as well as jet tunnels to cool the front brakes. And uh, a, a very aggressive uh, opening for the charge air cooler uh, for the turbo. Did you get that objective? We did, yeah. We wouldn't say that was our objective if we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that, uh, that the car does have is it's got the, uh, the iconic Focus RS spoiler in the back, which is, uh, which is an elevated wing element. It's very efficient. We also have a, a functional lower diffuser. And uh, this, was, this was a key enabler for uh, de delivering uh, zero lift uh, in the back of the vehicle. We have a new EcoBoost uh, high output 2.3 liter engine and uh, we started from the Mustang engine and uh, we further uh, modified it with new cylinder heads. Uh, we have new cylinder liners and uh, we also have unique sound tuning uh, and the engine delivers 350 or horsepower and uh, 350 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, the car does 0 to 62 miles an hour, 4.7 seconds, and a top speed of 165 miles an hour. And you look at that uh, torque curve, and it's just uh, it's the it's the trademark EcoBoost torque curve, where uh, it's very flat, it's very tractable. Uh, it makes the car very easy to drive on the track. You're not always shifting it. Uh, you don't have to always keep it in its power band. Max torque is nearly always available. How do we get the 350 horsepower? We have an all new turbo with a larger compressor housing and uh, unique turbine wheels. We have an all new uh, high flow open element intake. We have a large bore exhaust, uh, so a new hot end exhaust and a new cold end exhaust. And uh, it's also got an electric valve. Uh, so the car does mean uh, the European pass by. And then uh, one thing that we, that we measure for our cars is what we call rewarding to rev. And that's uh, a lot of things go into uh, being for an engine in order to be rewarding to rev. Uh, but we want the engine to race right up to the red line and not feel like it's struggling to get to the red line. And that's... Uh, that's what we call rewarding to run. The uh, the picture up there is our new uh, is our new exhaust system. So it's it is a high flow system. Uh, it meets the uh, the low back back pressure targets. Uh, it's got a two unique muffler with an electric valve, and uh, we've also added. Uh, a pop, what we call a pops and burbles strategy in sport mode and track mode. So on back outs and uh, and aggressive shifts, you get some uh, some audible uh, performance noises that uh, really kind of we think add to the experience of the car. And of course, we retune the engine mounts uh, for the uh, for the added power and torque.
We have a new EPAS, uh, retuned EPAS system. Uh, the, uh, the steering system is a low friction design, and uh, we have uh, chosen a linear steering gear uh, over a variable ratio that uh, was in the Focus ST. And what that does is it gives us uh, more linear steering feel through the entire uh, steering range, and it's also quicker uh, to give us that, that sharpness uh, that, the, uh, that the variable rate delivered. So, uh, we kind of think it, it's actually a, a better solution for a car like the uh, RS. This kind of gives you a, an idea of the torque build uh, and kind of how the steering picks up where the, where the ST takes off. So the red line is the torque build up uh, off center from a Focus ST and then you see in sport mode, normal mode, uh, the, the torque build is very similar to a Focus ST and then when you go into sport it gets quite a bit more aggressive. <coughs> we have a new uh, brake system for, uh, for the RS. It is the most powerful brake system we've ever installed on an RS product. It's got a front 350 millimeter disc. Uh, versus uh, 336 millimeter on the prior gen. Uh, we've also got a, a new rotor that has been optimized for vent design and, uh, and a Brembo monoblock caliper uh, that's uh, for piston design. We also have the nitrous blue uh, painted calipers and uh, the brake system is uh, 15 kilograms, which is about 6% lighter than the uh, equipment, than the Focus ST braking system. So not only is it significantly more powerful, but it's uh, significantly lighter. That's all four or just the fronts? That's the front okay. system. Wheels and tires, we have, uh, we have uh, a dark, alloy wheel design, it's a 19 inch uh, design. We also have a forged wheel, uh, an optional forged wheel that comes with the uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2 uh, track tire. And the uh, forged wheel is uh, 950 grams lighter than the, uh, than the cast alloy aluminum wheel. Two tires, uh, you may have read that we have a new uh, a new relationship with Michelin, so Michelin uh, will be uh, developing all of our tire performance tires going forward. So this is one of the programs that we worked very closely with them on. Uh, so we're the standard tire is uh, Michelin Pilot Super Sport, which uh, has the dual compound technology, and uh, and then we also have a, a optional track tire, uh, which is very focused for uh, max. Uh, Max track lateral grip. Is the size the same between? Size is the same. Okay. One of the things that uh, that we that we found early on in the program was that uh, we had a very lofty standard in terms of vehicle dynamics to deliver with the RS and. Uh, the the all-wheel drive was really it was it was working so well that it was taking the chassis into places that uh, were honestly beyond the uh, the capability of the system. So we needed to do quite a bit of uh, chassis stiffening actions, uh, both in the subframe and in the body and in the suspension, in order to get the, the whole system to work together and. Uh, once we did those, we, uh, we really woke up the vehicle dynamics and then the, the vehicle dynamics and the chassis tuning really started working in harmony with the steering and the all-wheel drive system to be a, a very cohesive, very fun to drive, very sharp uh, handling uh, system. You can see the, uh, some of the, this is a good example of uh, some of the rear subframe uh, stiffening actions where uh, this is a FEA plot of the uh, before and after. So you see the two hot spots right there on the on the rear subframe attachments. 
and with the bracing, uh, you don't you get a significant improve, improvement in the local stiffening. So, are those braces going from part of the body shell to another part of the body shell, or are they attached it's going to the from the subframe frame? to the body? Yeah. And there's several actions. Uh, there's there's also what we call a lion's foot that is a cross brace on the body system. There's structural foam uh, that we added in the uh, chassis rails. So uh, quite a few chassis stiffening and body stiffening actions. Uh, so in terms of uh, compared to uh, focus ST, we've gone up 9% on static torsional stiffness. Uh, which is 23% more than a standard focus, and uh, for local attachment areas, up to 200% increase in stiffness. And again, these, this was really the, the set of actions that woke up the vehicle dynamics of the car and got it all working as one uh, harmonious uh, vehicle. So with that, uh, I'm the all-wheel drive calibration engineer for the Focus RS. And um, as Jamal kind of uh, illustrated before, uh, when we talk about different drive line configurations for the RS, um, you know, there's considerations to look at front wheel drive or look at a, a conventional all-wheel drive system with a, what we call a, a hang-on coupling or the, uh, the torque vectoring system. And, you know, there, there, there's advantages and disadvantages in, in certain cases, but to, to really get the, the performance that we wanted out of the RS to, uh, to be able to ground the torque that the vehicle was delivering and to create the, um, the, you know, the handling characteristics that we wanted, uh, the torque factoring system was able to, to do that by, you know, as, as we can see, the front wheel drive is tanked up uh, under steer more and the, the conventional all wheel drive system is, is, is improving on that, but the, the torque factoring system is getting us to a level where we can have some, some pretty impressive uh, path following capability. And now, now just to try to um, explain how the whole all-wheel drive system works. Um, in regard to the front axle, it's essentially similar to a front-wheel drive vehicle. There's a, a differential in the transmission um, that's um, directing the torque to the front wheels, and there's, there's no control of the all-wheel drive system to the front wheels. Uh, but attached to the transmission is something we call the PTU, or the Power Transfer Unit. And that is a, um, essentially a 90 degree torque split. There's no clutches or there's no control inside that heater. That's just uh, sending torque to the drive shaft and sending it to the back of the car, where the, we call it RDU is, which is uh, sitting on the table in front of us. And um, inside the RDU, it's, uh, it's, it's different than our conventional all wheel drive system. Uh, there, there's no differential inside the rear RDU. There's a ring here, and there's a clutch for each rear wheel. And in order to overspeed the outside rear wheel, we have a ratio mismatch between the uh, EQ and the RDU, which gives us the ability to, to overspeed the outside wheel. Um, so that's kind of what the, what the illustration is showing there by the arrows. So if, if we're making a left turn, we, we see that there's, there's more torque going to the outside rear wheel to help uh, steer the vehicle around, around the corner. And now if I can try to get into something that's also caused a, a lot of confusion over the years. It's a, it's a, a common question we get asked is, uh, what's the torque split? And since we don't have a, a center differential, the torque split is infinitely variable. So the, the, the torque can be anything from pretty much zero to 100% of the available torque. Um, to be honest, I mean, to, to get the 100% available torque for the rear, you pretty much have to have almost no grip on the rear or, or on the front to be able to transfer that to the rear. But that, that's um, that's why we say that because if we had a um, if there was a center differential, for example, um, that was putting in 50% of the torque, then we would have a 50-50 split. But if we were on a split knee scenario and you had the, uh, the front wheels on ice and the rear on dry pavement, without any brake controls, the car wouldn't go anywhere. So by having this system, it's allowing us to essentially still try to get traction performance that's uh, you know, similar to a part-time all wheel or a four by four system. And um, being able to control that torque um, front to rear and, and now side to side. So in addition to the front to rear being up to 100%, once that torque gets to the rear axle, then we can also 
performance cars. Uh, this is one of the key enablers. Uh, you know, it's, if this was just a European only car, there's no way we could have gone to the lengths and to develop an all new all wheel drive system. So that's the real power. When you start selling a performance car around the world and you get that, that scale, uh, even though this is still relatively low volume, but the scale of all of those global products start, I mean, you can go so much further. You can start doing things that you never would have dreamed of doing uh, before. Uh, it's, it's extremely powerful for us. So that's why we're, uh, we're so uh, excited about our global performance cars. And uh, w one thing that we, uh, that we are not, uh, you know, we started this with the Fiesta ST and the Focus ST is that we are not dumbing the car down for North America. So uh, North America gets the same chassis tune that, uh, that Europe gets and the rest of the market gets. And it'll be uh, available in uh, spring 2016.